Hey there, Algebra 2. Um, we are continuing on in Chapter 1. We're actually going to do uh, Lesson 1.3 today, which is solving um, quadratic equations by factoring. Okay, so a little bit of pre-work is this, this vocabulary here, right, what we see here. So a monomial, we know that, I think I'm drawing, yeah. Oh, someday I'll learn. My face cannot be there. There we are. So let's get yellow, monomial. Mono means one. So a monomial is an expression that is either a number, a variable, or the product of a number and a variable, like a number and a variable. All right, so that's a monomial. It's one term together and that's it. A binomial has the sum um, or the difference of two monomials. So a binomial has two terms. Um, the X can be like a 3X because that's a monomial. Um, so a trinomial is what we're going to be dealing with today. Has three terms. So it's the sum of three monomials. Um, all right. So you know how to use the FOIL. We learned that in 1.2. Um, to write two binomials multiplied together to give us a trinomial. You can use factoring to write a trinomial as the product of binomials to factor. Now we're trying to, factoring means we're going to take our um, trinomial and split it into two binomials. That's what factoring means. So to factor x squared plus bx plus c, we need to find integers m and n such that the b and the c, um, m plus n, which is b, is the same as m times n, which is c. So the sum of m and n must equal b, and the product of m and n must equal c, okay? It sounds much more difficult than it is. I seem to be messing up my pens. Um, there we go, let's move on. Wasting time. All right, so if we notice these trinomials we're going to be working with, um, that A term is going to be 1 for all of them because that's an easier place to start. So if I try this first one, I've got x squared minus 9x plus 20. I'm actually going to take that number 20 and split it into its factors. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 3 doesn't work, 4 times 5. And I need to find two factors. Oh, I need to write that up here, though. Two factors that multiply to give me a positive 20 and add to give me a negative 9. Well, it actually works well if you look at it this way. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. And negative 4 plus negative 5 is negative 9. So these right here are my two factors. So now let's split this up. I have x squared minus 4x minus 5x plus 20. I just split that b term into um, two terms. Negative 9x is the same as negative 4x plus negative 5x. Now I do what's called factor by grouping. I take this first binomial and I take out my GCF the thing that's equal for both of them. So if I take out an x, I'm left with x minus 4. Because if I distribute that x back, I get x squared minus 4x. Same thing. Now we're going to take out the GCF, greatest common factor, of the second binomial. And I'm always going to take out a negative when there's a negative in between there. So if I take out a negative 5, I'm left with x minus 4. And it's kind of magic because these binomials are now equal. So now I have this mess and that mess. What is in here and there that's equal? Well, it's the x minus 4. So we're going to take out an x minus 4. Uh, sorry. I forgot I could move that down a little bit. So let's just do that. Yep. So I'm going to take out an x minus 4. And what's left is an x. 
I'm going to take out that x minus 4. And what's left is, is a 5. So what's in green here is my answer. This product of two binomials is equal to that trinomial. Okay, it's equal to x squared minus 9x plus 20. All right, let's try the next one. Um, let me get a new paper. So it's the same type of problem because there's no a term. And let's look at x squared plus 3x minus 12. Well, I need two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 12 and add together to give me 3. 12 is made up of 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. And that's it. Okay, so what adds together to get me 3? absolutely nothing. I hate it when they do this because they're trick problems and there actually is no answer. It cannot be factored. All right, let's try some more. So got to practice. I'm not going to do all of these. I'll do, let's do two of them. Um, if we were in the classroom, I'd ask you guys which one do you want to do. Let's go ahead and try number one. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to negative 3. So I have 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, 6 times 3 is the same. All right, so I have a negative 18 here, so one of these two has to be negative. And if I'm adding to negative 3, I believe if I make that negative, 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, and 3 plus negative 6 is negative 3. So those are my factors. So let's go ahead and write it. We're going to expand that trinomial. So minus, or sorry, plus 3x minus 6x minus 18. Okay, now I'm, this is called factoring by grouping. I'm going to take out an x. And I'm left with x plus 3. I'm going to take out a minus 6. And I'm left with x plus 3. And it's like magic. These will always be the same if you do it right. I'm going to factor out the x plus 3. And I'm left with x minus 6. And that is my answer. Let's try number 3. So negative 63 and a 2. Um, it's going to be a little harder. 2 doesn't actually work. I don't know why I wrote that. Um, 3 goes in there. 3 times 21, 4, 5, 6, 7, yep. Um, 9, So 7 times 9 is 63. Now they have to add together to give me a positive 2. So I need to make the 7 negative. So if I multiply these two, I get a negative 63. And if I add them, I get a positive 2. So go ahead and expand your trinomial. Minus 7x plus 9x minus 63. Now it doesn't matter what order you put those middle terms in. It's always going to work out. Now we're going to factor by grouping. Oh, this should be an R, and that should be an R. So I'm going to factor out an R. I'm left with R minus 7. I'm going to factor out an R, and I'm left, sorry, I'm going to factor out a 9. Got a little ahead of myself there. And I'm left with R minus 7. These match. So I factor those out, and I'm left with R plus 9. And that is my answer. All right, next, we always have special products, okay? These are fun. If you can recognize the pattern, your work is much easy, much easier. So if I look at this, it's called factoring of special products. Factoring quadratic expressions involves trial and error. Um, however, some expressions are easy to factor because they follow special patterns. So here I have the difference of two squares. 
So this means difference because I'm using subtraction and that means my first term is a perfect square and my second term is a perfect square. And they always factor into the pattern a plus b and a minus b. My example would be x squared minus 4. x squared is a perfect square. It's actually x times x. And 4 is also a perfect square. It's 2 times 2. Once I've factored out the first term and the second term, I can use my pattern, which is a plus b and a minus b, where a is x and b is 2. x plus 2, x minus 2. So when I have the difference of perfect squares, it always factors into a plus b, a minus b. Okay, that's your first pattern. I always learned things that when I had just two terms with a subtraction in between them, I bet it was going to be a difference of perfect squares. Okay, all right, so the next one is a perfect square trinomial. Trinomial, three. So a perfect square trinomial means that I've got a perfect square at the beginning and a perfect square at the end, and the middle term is going to be 2 times a times b. And that factors into a, a plus b quantity squared. So here I know that the a term, or sorry, the first term is x times x. The last term is 3 times 3. So the middle term is going to be 2 times 3 times x, which is 6x. So I know that'll factor into x plus 3 quantity squared. Same one here, except it's a difference. So this is a perfect square trinomial. Um, the first term is a perfect square, the second, the last term is a perfect square, and the middle term works out to 2 times a times b. So let's practice it. x times x for the first term, 2 times 2 for the last term. And it actually is negative 2 times negative 2 because the middle term is negative 2 times 2 times x in the wrong order. It should actually be 2 times negative 2 times x, which is negative 4x. And that gives you x minus 2 quantity squared. Let's practice. Oh, it looks like I left one of the answers in there. Sorry, um, I should have deleted that. So here I have a difference. Of perfect squares because this first term factors into x times x and the last term factors into 7 times 7. Therefore I know that my answer is x plus 7 x minus 7 because that's the pattern that we have to memorize. It's not really memorized it's just that we're going to use it so often it's going to become second nature. Let's try this last one. I see a perfect square and a perfect square, so I wonder if it isn't a perfect square trinomial. Let's practice and see if it is. So that first term is d times d, the, sec the last term is 6 times 6, and the middle term should work out to 2 times 6 times d, which is 12d, and it does. So we know that this is going to be d plus 6 quantity squared because we know the pattern. Another one. Okay, this is a perfect square trinomial with a positive. Here's a perfect square trinomial with a minus z times z. And I think that's 13 times 13. So the middle actually should be negative 13 times negative 13 because the middle is going to be 2 times negative 13 times z, which is negative 26z. So it works out. So here we're going to have z minus 13 quantity squared. Not too bad, right? All right. All right, I'm going to go faster this time. Here I have the difference of perfect squares. x plus 3, x minus 3. Here I have the difference of perfect squares. q plus 10 q minus 10. Here I think I have a perfect square trinomial. 64 is 8 times 8. So this should be 2 times 8 times y, which is 16y. So I have y plus 8 quantity squared. It does get more challenging. All right, and this one is going to be w minus 9 quantity squared. All right, let's move on. We have a lot to cover in this section, so I'm going a little fast through the 
guided practice. All right, so now solving quadratic equations. Um, you can use factoring to solve certain quadratic equations. A quadratic, a quadratic equation in one variable, that means only one letter is present, can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. It becomes an equation when we put that equal sign in there. If you remember in the past, we've talked about um, expressions versus equations. ax squared plus bx plus c is an expression. And then we say equals something else and it becomes an equation. So we can't have a equal to zero because that knocks out our square if a was zero and it's no longer quadratic. This is called standard form of the equation. The solutions of a quadratic equation are called roots of the equation. They're also called zeros. Um, if the left side of this equation can be factored, then the equation can be solved using the zero product property, which basically means I'm going to factor it. That means that this binomial or this binomial is going to be zero to make it equal to zero. If this part of the equation is zero, then it negates that one, right? Or if this part is zero, then it multiplies to get that to zero. It's called the zero product property. Product means multiplication, right? All right, let's see what else is going on here. If the product of two expressions is zero, then one or both of the expressions is equal to zero, being expressions x plus 2, I don't know, x minus 4. If the product of these two expressions, that's an expression, that's an expression. If the product of them is equal to zero, then one or both um, is equal to zero. So if a and b are expressions and a, b is equal to zero, then either the a is equal to zero or the b is equal to zero, or they're both equal to zero. An example, okay, here's our equation. That means that x plus 5 is equal to zero, written right there, or x plus 2 is equal to zero, written right there. That means if I take this and I solve it, subtract 5 from both sides, x is going to be equal to negative 5. Or if I take this, this equation and I solve it for x, subtract 2 from both sides, that means x could be equal to 5, or x could be equal to two, negative 2, or both. All right, let's try one. So what are the roots of this expression? x squared minus 5x minus 36. First, we have to factor it. Is this a perfect square? I don't think so, because this breaks into x times x. This breaks into 6 times 6, but it's negative, so one of those is negative, so that doesn't work. All right, I just wanted to check it, because that's what I was teaching you guys to do. My eraser is not working very well. There we go. I'm not sure what to aim at. So I need two things that multiply to negative 36 and add to negative 5. So 2 times 18, 3 times 13, no, 15, 16, 18. Oh gosh. Does 3 go in there? 12. Sorry. 3 times 12. Yep. 4 times 9, I think that one might be it. Um, so if I make the 9 a negative, if I multiply those, I get negative 36. And if I add those, I get negative 5. So that's it. So that means I'm going to have x, oops. x squared um, plus 4x minus 9x minus 36. Factor out the first, factor out the last. You'll, you'll be able to skip parts in this as you get better. Um, this is how I teach factoring for all strengths in math. Um, but as you get quicker, you can skip some steps. Now we're going to use the zero product property. That means that this binomial is equal to zero, or this one is equal to zero. And then we solve. Add nine both sides. x equals nine, or x equals negative four. So I would subtract four to both sides. 
So that is my answer, 9 and negative 4, C. All right, use quadratic equation as a model. So here I have a nature preserve. The town has a nature preserve with a rectangular field that measures 600 meters by 400 meters. So 600 by 400. The town wants to double the area of the field by adding land as shown. Find the new dimensions of the field. So what is the dimensions of this part of the field? I really wish I had an undo button because I did not want to do that. Um, 600 times 400 is going to be equal to, is it 2,400? Or are there two more zeros? I think there's going to be two more zeros. That's huge. 240,000. Yep. Now, what we're doing is we just did 400 times 600 for the area of the original. Now, the problem says the town wants to double the area. So if we double that, we get 480,000. And that's going to be equal to adding something to one side and adding something to the other side. Town wants to double by adding land as shown. So we added x to the 600 meter side and x to the 400 meter side. And we doubled the area. So we need to figure out what x is to find the new dimensions in the field. So we're going to go ahead and foil it. I'm already out of room. So that's first, outer, inner. So outer and inner, and then last. And that's still equal to 480. Now I need some more paper. But don't worry. Actually, I'm going to leave that right there. All right, let's get this in standard form. Okay, so I need to subtract from both sides. That's gone. I'm left with 0 equals negative 240,000 plus 400 plus 600 is 1,000 plus x squared. Still not in standard form. Every time I do this, it takes more time. <laughs> so I have x squared plus 1,000x minus 240,000 equals 0. There we have standard form, okay? Now I need to factor this. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me 240,000 negative and add to give me 1,000. I think that's going to be 600. Hmm, that can't be 600 and 400. Let's see, 200 times 1,200, 24, four zeros, yep. So there we go, and I need the 200 to be negative, so when I add them together, I get 1,000. Perfect. So that will factor into x minus 200 and x plus 1,200 equals zero. That means your solution is 200 or negative 1,200. Now let's talk about this for a second. We're talking area of a field, and we're increasing our area of a field by x. Can x be negative? Can I measure something negative? No. Can I take away parts of the field and increase the area? No. So we actually, as mathematicians, negate that as not a possibility and only use the 200, okay? So we just reject the negative value. 
Really, that's what we do. And I have another piece of paper just in case. All right, guided practice. So solving equations. Um, negative 42, negative 1. I think it's going to be 6 times 7. And I want the 7 to be negative because that gives me negative 1. Okay, I'm going to skip a step. x plus 6, x minus 7 equals 0, x equals negative 6, x equals 7. Okay, skip some steps there. I hope you're okay with that. And then in 4, suppose the field initially was 1,000 by 300. Find the new dimensions of the field. I'm going to leave that one up to you guys. Um, let's see. Oh, I didn't actually finish the last one. The dimensions of the field. I had 600 plus x and 400 plus x. So the dimensions of the field would be 600 by 800. Sorry, didn't finish. That means this one right here, I'll let you guys finish it and you can check your answer. 1200 by 500 meters. There's just seven examples in this lesson. So, all right, let's move on. So find the zeros of the function by rewriting the function in intercept form. You remember intercept form went like this, x plus, mm -mm, x minus, x minus p, x minus q, where the x intercepts were p and q. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Do you remember that from last lesson? So let's go ahead and find our intercepts. So negative 12 factors, negative 1. I think it's going to be 3 times 4. And I want the 4 to be negative because when I add them together, I get a negative 1. So y equals x plus 3. Sometimes I don't know what my hands are doing. x minus 4. Okay, so <clears throat> the zeros of this function are the roots. <coughs> Sorry. The roots or where it crosses the x-axis. <clears throat> Don't know what's going on with my throat. So here I have x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. Those are the zeros because it's the x-intercepts. It's where y equals 0 because I should have put this in here. This goes to, it's, I want to find the zeros, so I want to find the x values where y equals 0. I don't know why I did that. Should probably take a break before I write your next, record your next lesson. So that's what we're solving for here. When y equals 0, what is x? Right there. And I can graph that and get negative 3 and 4. And I can do that in Desmos too. Let's do that really quick so you can see it. Y equals, let's see what problem am I on? X squared plus, nope, minus x minus 12. You see right here and right there are the two zeros. Okay, x equals negative 3 and x equals 4 when y equals 0. Right, find the zeros of the function by rewriting the function in intercept form. Um, I think this is a perfect square. 6 times 6, 2 times 6 times x is 12, so we can say it's x plus 6 quantity squared. So if I'm finding the zeros, I'm going to set that equal to 0. x plus 6 is quantity squared. It's really this. So I can say x plus 6 equals 0, x equals negative 6, x plus 6 equals 0, x equals negative 6. So those are my two zeros, my roots. And when I graph it, what's amazing is it will only hit the x-axis in one spot. 
same here. And I can graph it like this, y equals x squared plus 12x plus 36. I'm going to get the same answer as if I type it out in factored form too. x plus 6, x plus 6, same answer. And I can also get the same answer when I do this, x plus 6 quantity squared. Okay, three different ways to write the equation, all with the same answer. It's kind of magic, but not. All right, I'm going to leave these to you guys. I'm going to give you the answer. So here I have negative 7 and 2. Here I have negative 3 and 10. You can always graph them to double check your work. And then number 12, I only have one answer because it's a perfect square. Okay, so you only have one zero. Oh, and I lie, there's only five examples on this lesson. The next lesson, there's seven. So I'm gonna stop things here. Um, you're gonna let me know if you have any questions.